website and learn about those types of things. Uh, I'm sure other groups have other opportunities for students to get on board, and it's always a good way to kind of get your foot in the door and in both like understanding what it's like to be out at sea and doing this type of thing, and also you know get in, get involved with different groups who do this types of things. So. Lots of information on OET's website about that type of opportunities. And maybe that's a good plug for the Ocean Science Internship. Ashley, do you want to explain kind of what your internship is? Sure. Um, so right now in the control van, I'm doing some data logging, which is just taking down notes about what Steve says and taking screen captures of what we see on camera, as well as uh, notes about the samples that we collect. Um, and once the samples come up, I help Steve process them in the wet lab and also um, do some back-end data analysis and uh, summarizing. So it's been a great internship so far. I feel like I've learned so much in the time that I've been out here and highly, highly recommend applying for it. Thanks, Ashley. And you can go on Instagram and see a day in the life of the intern right now. Actually, I think it's still live, so you can follow Ashley's Aww. story, which is fun. Yeah, I posted a little bit earlier, so it should still be up. When I was applying for internships, unfortunately, they were only open to people living in the U.S. and Canada. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid that might be the case with OET. I but think it's currently, worth, yeah. It's worth keeping an eye on to see if they ever open it up. Um, yeah. Uh, we, ha we have diff scientists out sometimes from all over the world. We had a group from Germany out um, from Max Planck Institute uh, in the Gulf of Mexico several years ago. Oh, cool. Um, they were studying microbes associated with clams at seeps. I think that was 2015. It's been a few years. Um, what else? Yeah, it, it really depends on what the science We've had is a planned for that year. Now that we're in the Pacific, I think, uh, you know, out, out here in Hawaii, I think it's going to be largely focused on exploration of these deep seamount environments and, um, volcanoes and things like that. Are we doing point two or point three now? Oops. Uh, still point two. Ooh, yeah, in a second. Um, a couple comments have come in actually saying that Eurofleets.eu is a great resource for European research vessels oh. um, and a good way to find some contact info for organizations based out of Europe.
this is one of those deceptive substrates where it tends to be more uh, cohesive uh, sediments um, kind of crusted together with the sediment drape and nodules, but they look almost nodule-like in certain places. Most of the stuff off to the right looks like nodules, though. Swimming shrimp. Go for zoom. Shrimpy. Okay, so give some space. Yep, that's good. I know, he's not in a hurry, really. Bridge, Nav. Okay, we've got Kelly in the video chair now. Yeah, that was my Zoom, Gabby. That was gorgeous. <laughs> so good. Can we move I don't need validation or anything. Very no, no, I do, I'm with you 100%. Five. Okay, I'm going to scram. Go ahead. Thank you. So smooth. Got to get used to this little, those little blue things. How often are you adjusting? Almost constantly. <laughs> I feel like that's what I don't have the eye for is like understanding what would be like good lighting or not. Yeah, just spin it a bit and see what, you know, you'll find, you'll, you'll be able to tell, oh, that looks too bright, that looks too dark. <laughs> A yeah. little darker than what you might think. Interesting. That's yeah. why it's fine when people go on there, especially like it was interesting when I was watching. Like if you put a ROV pilot or a scientist in that chair, it'll be too hot because they want to they want to open it up and see everything. That's kind of how I feel right. immediately. Where yeah, I'm like, but it's actually you gotta pull it back down just a bit to make it look. Yeah, I'd say the biggest limitation there is like the highlights. So whatever's the brightest. You kind of want to keep that from getting overexposed. So that's why when we go up to a big white sponge, everything behind it becomes really dark because I turn it down so the sponge is exposed correctly, but everything else is much res much less reflective. Huh. It is neat to see this, like, your screen here, so yeah. crisp. Yeah. Ooh, sea cucumber friend. Yeah. Give me a zoom. Nice. What's that little thing on the left there? Looks Is like it? a barnacle. Oh yeah, it's kind There's of a couple of them. Big. Stalked and not stalked. Okay, go ahead. So I like to I like Ooh. to use my left hand on the uh, iris knob when I'm zooming. Ooh. So I can do. Both. Okay. Two-handed video uh, engineering right over, now? And then reach over and focus with your pinky. No way, really? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Let me go see if we have any questions back there. Oh, yeah, go <laughs> take on the comments. <laughs> Why is it so overexposed, they said. <laughs> Steve. So mean. So close. <laughs> Speaking of overexposed, this screen is so bright back here. <laughs> no, they said you're doing a great job. Someone said your uh, iris usage is very good. Aw. Yeah, it is. This is awesome.
It's hard to tell when you're just looking at beige and gray. <laughs> Is it too beige? <laughs> Not beige enough? <laughs> uh. <laughs> Picking out wall paint for the home. Just <laughs> various shades of beige in the deep sea collection. <laughs> dope. Really. Manganese dope crust well. black or beige. Stocked <laughs> <laughs> uh. crinoid. Family Bathy Crinidae. There's a question about the lighting asking if keeping the background darker would scare off fewer critters, but actually the lights on Hercules stay consistent in the way that we brighten and darken the images by using the iris on the camera. Polyopagon sponge just passed. Steve, I'm really appreciating your like delicate touch. I like don't notice you changing the iris ever, but when I'm doing it, I'm like, Ugh. I don't notice you changing it, Kelly. It looks good. Yeah, it looks Thanks, good. Gabby. I am like super. I'm super enamored with that control for iris, though. It's so delicate. Very yeah, smooth. it's such a fine control. Like that's not how Herc is. Herc is like <laughs> junk, junk. So what is the mechanism for the uh, pan and tilt? Is it? It's not hydraulic, is it? Yeah, yeah it, it is. It is hydraulic. Oh, interesting. Yeah, that's, that's why, why it's kind of ka-chunky. Yeah. That's why it's lumpy. And it's not proportional. It's just either going or not, I, I think, think, right? I think that would be my dream upgrade would be a... Would it be electric be smoother? Yeah, yeah. electric is smoother or proportional uh, hydraulics. That's Dan's. Dan talks about that all the time. Steve, I'm now realizing you have a rear view mirror at me in the control van too. Yes, I do. I had no idea. It's sitting in someone else's seat. It's like a whole new world. <laughs> Out of body experience. <laughs> you can control that camera too. Oh yeah. The one that looks like <laughs> <laughs> yep. That's that's where the power is. If yeah. you notice like the video chair is like Pretty much, you can avoid it with all the cameras, you know? <laughs> There's no... Yeah. Control of the outside cameras, the deck. Yep. So much power. Yeah. yeah I noticed the, the previous watch video engineer is Dave, right? Yep. He will randomly put, throw up different cameras. So, have to be ready at all times. Oh, I do that too. I haven't noticed. I'm going to get imaged next time, aren't I? Well, you've told me you don't like the science camera on you. No, it's the actually, nostril cam is very invasive. It's actually yeah. tilted. <laughs> <laughs> it's aimed at the empty chair right now. The nostril cam. Invasive. Yeah, well, we uh, the last year it was set up in a way that it was facing up, like kind of looking up towards the scientist. And so, <laughs> yeah, up, up your nose. Yeah. We got that one, and we also have the bald spot cam up above. It's super mm. nice. <laughs> that, that is that is my least used that camera in the right van. Yeah, yeah, that is my last oh. choice in the van. That's good to hear. I hate that camera. <laughs> <laughs> you see everything. All the snacks in the front row. <laughs> see yeah. It is, um, oh yeah, there is a camera... It's really, I think someone last year did a time lapse of the camera that's in front of the Herc pilot. And you just see like people's eyes di darting back and forth. That's cool. Um, huh. because, oh, yeah. Like, looking at all the different cameras. It was a good shot of uh, Josh yesterday when he was talking about his underwater logging experience. <laughs> 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 to have Josh streaming out on Channel 3. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> It's fascinating, though. That was a crowd pleaser. People love that story. I 
I have asked him. I think story. he's told it to me like every year I've sailed with him because I like <laughs> keep soliciting it because I think it's so funny. It's amazing. Uh. And then I asked him to tell it again this year. It's pretty cool. Partially, like, I only ever really imagine ROVs doing science work. Like, that's my only exposure to ROVs. Like, it's hard for me to conceive of them doing other stuff, but they do a lot of things. This is definitely the most fun, I think, yeah. that I've experienced. I mean, most of the time, ROVs are using like, industry for yeah there was a shrimp there i think looking at pipes and red boring English. things go for oh. zoom hello shrimpy i assume is that some of that mucus stuff on the left there yeah no. rock's not rock's not there we go It's like a luxurious mucus mansion to me. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. Perspective. Oh. <laughs> it's on top of a boulder, so real estate value yeah, is nice. It's got good a nice hill view. value. Yeah, absolutely. It's a house on the hill. We've got viewers from 12 different countries right now. Oh, wow. Thanks for joining us. Grenadier? Grenadier fish? Yeah. Oh. Rat tail fish. No, sorry, buddy. Yeah, it's pretty scary over here. You can give me a zoom on him. He's going to want to take off. That's a unique star underneath there. Oh, yeah. Let's see if I can it's take a, a really look. really tough spot. Yeah, it is. I'll see if I can get below it and take a look. If only we had someone to adjust iris control so we could... I knew you were about to say <laughs> something. <laughs> uh, oh, no, actually, I think... is it, Could it be a Brazingid? It could be. Yeah, I just wasn't sure. You can see, start to see the spines on the arm tips now. Go for zoom. Oh, I got to focus, huh? Yeah, you do. There we go. Yeah, that's okay. that is. Singed, nice. I don't have the pinky thing down like Steve, but... Look at the surface of the rock there, the encrustation yeah. of the, of the manganese. Very lumpy, buttroidal texture. So one, right. tri one trick, too, if you zoom all the way in as far as it'll go and then focus, when you pull back, it'll all stay in focus. You don't have to readjust. So zoom all the way okay. and then... Oh, go wide. Okay. So it, sometimes you don't always have the chance to do it, but if you zoom all the way, all the way in, on something, focus it, and then pull back and frame uh, it. Okay. It'll stay in focus. Cool. Yeah. You want your seat back? Swap. Okay, I'm going to go back to SciComm. 
See you later. No longer video, Steve, over here. Kelly, it's been great. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Medusa. Go for zoom. Let's see if I can get it. Ooh. Ooh. Little zippy one. Yeah, nice. Oh. Wow. <laughs> Oops. Shot. Yeah, that's great. Okay, go ahead. Tiny little narco medusa. It's a cutie. See, I could just follow this thing all day. Yeah. I tend to get like real tunnel vision when I'm doing that. Sure, yeah. You can go for zoom again. So you're like trying to predict him, yep. trying to fly. Some of his movements are really fast. They're not very predictable, are they? Yeah, not really. Cool, though. We saw some pretty amazing um, gelatinous zooplankton in our 2019 exploration of the Line Islands a bit further south from here. We saw a box jellyfish at almost 700 meters. Oh, wow. It's so obvious, too. Perfectly box shaped. No, <laughs> really? I've never uh, seen I mean, one. Relatively yeah. rectangular. Yeah. yeah. With, they had four tentacles coming off. They earned their name. Yeah. I didn't know they could be that deep, but apparently, yeah, they're, they're known from that deep. We thought we had seen a depth record, but it was still a few meters shy of the record. Where did you say that was? Uh, it was in the Line Islands. Um, I don't know if it. I don't know if it was Kingman and Palmyra or if it was Jarvis, mm -hmm. one of those two. I have. I have that data somewhere. Oh my gosh! A coral. Yay. A Maybe. Newt? Maybe. A dead <laughs> coral. Go for zoom. There are a lot of old bases around here. So there's corals that have been here persistent for some time. It's just that there are not kind of the mass that we're used to. Okay, go on. Ophiocanthids. They're just as happy without the coral as with. So it suggests that now it is kind of a commensal relationship where the brittle stars really aren't getting any benefit from the coral itself other than the skeleton it produces. They're very happy enough to be on the skeleton without the coral present. Nav. I'm I'm kind of surprised. This uh, slope 
I thought it would be more Can we move 50 cohesive? meters, 065? It's, it's got patches, right, of big boulders, but a lot of it is just Thank you. palace rubble or consolidated. Amalgamated. These are my geology words. <laughs> Has anyone heard any updated rumors about on deck time? And are we still working on about 24 hours? As far as I know. That's yeah. the rumor I got. Okay. Where does that put us then? Yeah, I'm just trying to think about pacing. That's a great point. Um, um, give me a second. What is 20? I don't even remember when we launched this dive. Noon? Noon? Yeah. Noon. Oh, we went in the water at 12.30, so... Waypoint 7. That sounds like a nice little knoll. Yeah. Be nice I'm, to check that out. I'm hoping we can get up there. Well, suddenly it looks very far away. <laughs> How far have we come? Uh, Probably pretty far. Yeah, we came up... Yeah, we actually have. Uh, we got on bottom somewhere around between waypoint four and five. Yeah. Between, yeah, about right here. It's been, let's see, 320 plus 420. So. 750-ish meters we've gone. And so the summit is... So the summit is about 2.2 kilometers away, and if we continue at 0.2 knots, that's, or continue at 0.2 knots and go just straight there, that is 6 hours and 45 minutes. That sounds very doable. Yes. Because we have 10 hours to do it. weather just keeps getting better. Yeah. Yeah, great weather out here and then get back to Honolulu and probably have rain. Stop saying that. 
I'm just, it's actually looking a little better in Honolulu. Better? Yep. But did you check in with Kate and her confidential weather? That's, <laughs> oh, yeah. that's <laughs> really what we need to know. I'll give her a call later. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's pulling up windy. <laughs> it works. Oh, there we go. It's looking Secret not sunny. Weather. Not sunny, but less rainy. Oh, wow. Yeah, no. It, we, it would be hard for it to be worse than the last time we were there. True. Yeah. True. That was I a think pretty nasty storm. There we go. Brought me to somewhere in Louisiana. <laughs> on a Louisiana? Yeah. <laughs> Checking on the weather at AGU. Well, you can see the weather in, for Honolulu in satellite feed three right now. So, rain. Ooh, maybe. We get there Monday morning, 6 a.m. Yeah, that's about when the rain starts. That's where the rain starts. <laughs> about 8 o'clock. Oh, the afternoon looks pretty I like how precisely you know what time we're getting there. <laughs> 6 a.m. Oh. Just it's in time. In the, uh, I wonder if I hit. I'm going to make another bagel run. Looks a little windy on the way in, maybe. Um, I want to move you guys more easterly at zero eight zero. Great. Um, all right. Make it happen. No fighting there. Nope. Bridge nav. It's just where I've always wanted to go. Three eight zero. Eight. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Can you go 100 <laughs> meters, zero, eight, zero? <laughs> Thank you. I've always wanted to go to 380. <laughs> <laughs> Just never had the opportunity. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's not a bearing. <laughs> Lots of tiny, tiny, tiny little hole fests here. Seems like this rock only supports a certain number of colonies at a time. At least a dozen or so small hold fasts of these small Remula Gorgia colonies. I'd love to know how long they live for. You would think if they were really that old, they would be more coated with Thing in East, they're just kind of discolored yellow. I think we could probably safely say Go these colonies zoom. here are probably just maybe if at least wow, I'm doing a really bad job several right decades now. old. But what's interesting is that they don't leave super persistent skeletons for too long because you don't see too many of them. Maybe very few that are completely denuded. Great, thank you.
some ripples. It's ripples or traces. Where you? Oh, I see where On you're the looking. Left there. Or they, they could be slumps too. Where the sediment has just slumped down slope a bit. Let's take a look if we have time. Is this what you're looking at, Steve? Yeah, right. It's hard to say. No. No, I wouldn't I wouldn't call those waves. I think they're kind of irregular. It's probably a, like a switchbacks for these sea cucumbers. They'll hmm. do switchbacks up the slope. Sometimes game it's trail. Particularly steep. Steep. Did I just say sleep? I think I just said sleep, but it meant <laughs> steep. <laughs> so it tells you where I'm at. Where I'm at right now. You're steepy. Did you say sleep? I think you said I steep. Oh, okay. I was thinking sleep too. I said both. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, it's the middle of the night here, Hawaiian Standard Time, two thirty in the morning. That's a big boulder. Steve, when's our next rock sample? Uh, 2170 meters. Okay. Got a bit to go. So it should be in the vicinity of between waypoint six and seven. There's only two more rock samples, just that one and the summit. Yeah. I have to remember to bring more of those. The seamount kind of reminds me of the first dive we did. Everyone was saying it was so barren, it's so barren. I got to the top and it was pretty immaculate. Sometimes the slopes are just not not great places for corals and sponges to hang out. I would expect, you know, though, to see more stocked sponges and things like that, maybe attached to the, the harder, larger, harder boulders. It's just nothing. Occasionally, a polyopagon sponge, Romulogorgia colonies. I think we're still maybe a couple hundred meters deep from where we would expect to see greater diversity. So I'm optimistic that by the time we get to that next rock collection, somewhere after waypoint six or that knoll, um, that's our uh, highlighted target right now see something more substantial.
I'll pass it along. I'm going to call these uh, macadamia nodules. <laughs> oh, to be, yes. that's <laughs> amazing. To be more uh, appropriate. It topical. And topical. Yeah. I can't believe we hadn't thought of that before. Mm -hmm. So we'll use them as a metaphor from now on. Yeah, when we okay. describe nodules. Precious macadamia. Macadamia is the nucleus. Yeah. <laughs> and Ooh, the chocolate yes. is yes, the yes, yes. I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you. Look at it go. No, I'm not. Good luck. They're the fastest too... thing in the oh, Wow. <laughs> it's really going. Oh, my God. They're so funny. Uh, I mean, to be fair, that's kind of what I do when I fall out of bed. Too. <laughs> <laughs> you just keep going. Just the long tumble. <laughs> You're just so weird. Uh, I mean, they're not even by any stretch the weirdest thing we see on any given dive, but, like, they're so weird. Might be the most... Surprising, like low yeah. motion now. It seems yeah. like a lot of energy to expend. Like, yeah, I wonder. Here, you know? They're very much falling, though. I wonder if most of that is just, um, I don't know, gravity. Falling with style. Yeah, exactly. It's definitely steep here, but yeah, it's. I don't know. They seem to. Is that just getting from A to B, or they think there's the RV kind of scaring them to? Escape kind of response, or yeah, that that seems like a good escape response because, like, you yeah. wouldn't want to draw that much attention to yourself normally. That would be crazy. I'm making a huge scene. I agree. I think that's defensive. <laughs> making a scene <laughs> <laughs> to who? Like, <laughs> if you have a sea star predator, I imagine that's well, yeah, a really that great way to escape for sure. <laughs> you could get us. You could get. Days ahead of the sea star in <laughs> two seconds. Life Some times. of the sea stars are like pretty fast though, like relatively fast. <laughs> yeah, I've seen some that have been moving at centimeters per. Yeah, like sun stars. Minutes. Yeah, actually pretty quick. Brittle stars are super quick. <laughs> I like when they just dra they're a little dramatic <laughs> they though, you know, like <laughs> drag it across the sea floor. Or uh. like jumping off of corals. I like the jump. I would really love to understand that jump yeah, mechanism right? more. I don't know why they do that. Do you think it's not also a defensive escape thing when they... I don't think so. I mean, I, I thought it would be more effective to be in the coral colony. You know, at least you have some some shelter. Steve, I would like to place an order for some corals, please. <laughs> Where are the corals? Uh, uh, to move up a little bit faster to about 2,200 meters. Okay. <laughs> Go faster. Moving up. So this summer, we actually did observe in real time some of these um, jumping brittle stars jump off the colony. And in real time, they actually moved back to the base and started to climb up again. Oh, really? So they, they do. Yeah. If you sit there for 20 minutes or so, they will... Uh, start to climb back up. Oh, wow. Space jumping, essentially. I wonder how they know. How do they find their way back, you know? Yeah. Must be pretty challenging to try and study, like, behavioral, like, invertebrate behavioral ecology, like, in the deep sea. Like, I know it's hard enough in, like, intertidal zones. Yeah. It's a very slow process. The jumpers are some of the fastest <laughs> things around. The jumpers. <laughs> Sufficient Argus. Yeah. Cape Cuskiel. Coral alert. Coral alert. <laughs> I see a coral. I'm going to zoom on it because it's a coral. Go for zoom. Definitely a coral. <laughs> yep. Some Xenophyophores in the sediment, too. Where, where, where? Uh, right behind the, between the V that's cut out from the coral colony. Okay. Oh, I see Under it, I see lasers, it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Totally. Buddy. 
structure. Now that I know that they're like a single-celled organism that built themselves as a house, like I'm very enamored with them. They're pretty wild. Yeah. Yeah, the kind of amoeba-like, if you could imagine that. Is I'm actually really struggling to imagine that. Go wide. Like, that's a very bizarre idea to me. Bridge, Nav. Can we move 100 meters, bearing 080? Now it's starting to pick up again. I suspect we'll see a higher diversity when we get to this little knoll here. It's my hypothesis. We'll have come up a couple hundred meters. We'll start to come into the realm of the living diversity of coral. I would have thought to have seen at least a couple of mushroom corals or something like that. Mm. It's depth, but it's nothing. This may lend support to the hypothesis that those northeast ridges and north ridges are actually biodiversity hotspots uh, since the pr most of the prevailing currents are coming likely out of the north. Are we going to get to test that theory on the next dive? Yeah, we're going to try and keep diving. So I think we have most cardinal directions covered except southeast or south. I don't think we've done any south ridges yet. This is kind of southwestish, west southwest. We started on the west face. Now we're on the southwest ridge. How does that compare to the last cruise when we were exploring different deep sea mounts? Similarities or? We had a tendency to focus on um, ridges that, not in any particular orientation, mostly focused on ridges that were uh, extensions of uh, guillots, so long flat tops, uh, seamounts. Uh, the guillot ridges tended to have higher diversity and abundance of corals at all depths, even down to this depth, 23, 2400 meters. But none of the seamounts we're visiting on this cruise are classified as guillots. So they're distinct in that respect. They've never quite reached the surface enough to get um, shallow water coral larvae to settle on them. Oh, and okay. then produce kind of a carbonate cap that builds over time. And then uh, typically guillots, after they... Um, if they subside faster than the corals can uh, build up uh, into the photic zone and keep that kind of
perfect depth within the photic zone so that they can precipitate calcium carbonate, they will often sink down, uh, start to become eroded away or smoothed out into these guillots of table mounts. And that's, uh, that's how we view them in the bathymetry. But some of them are really extensive. If you go down to the line islands, some of the guillots down there are just miles and miles and miles long. But the, these aren't recent. A lot of the guillots that exist in this area, um, for example, the ones on the Lilio Kalani Ridge, as well as the um, South Wentworth, Wentworth Chain, which we were just at, are probably Cretaceous in nature. So, um, go for Zoom. The same period of time uh, when dinosaurs were around. Wow. Is when a lot of these reefs were growing on top of these seamounts. Went too far on the. There's. If you go too far on Joy Gain, you just can't go anywhere. Oh, yeah, we saw this Helothurian a bit deeper, too. Go for Zoom? What, oh, wait, uh, no, it's it wasn't. Pretty... It was during the dinner relief. That's right, we were talking about this. It wasn't this watch. Does it have, like. Forminifera or like hydroids or something growing on it? Yeah, they're probably, um, I think they're small pteropod shells. Oh. Um, that they stick to them with the little two feet. White things, you mean? Or the actual? Yeah, I think they're, they're what parts about of the, the fuzziness? Sediment. Yeah, but the. The fuzziness is sediment. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wait, go wide. So I, I was uh, using a metaphor. Um, some holothurians use different types of camouflage. And it's not sure, not clear if it's physical camouflage. You know, not sure what function that or would Or like would acoustic serve. camouflage or electrical camouflage or like... Chemical camouflage yeah. too, yeah. Um, so you can imagine <laughs> uh, some sea cucumbers, if they use camouflage, it's kind of analogous to, um, you know, you're at a baseball game and you have a hot dog, right? hot dog falls out of the bun and rolls down into the stands, right? What's down in the stands? Like peanut shells and all this other junk that people throw on the floor at baseball games. And so it kind of just Go coats them. Uh, but they do it them to, the, to themselves using their tube feet. Oh, they have tube feet like sea stars. <clears throat> yep. Would that yeah. be similar to like urchins that put like shells on top of them and kind of hide? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Some some urchins also kind of cover their tracks and cover themselves with different bits and pieces. Okay, Let's go away. Remember. Nice. Those are the ones that don't come up very well. Uh, we sampled He's those quite the a bit. The purple ones, you're saying? Yeah, we sampled them quite a bit in the past. In the past, they just tend to disintegrate. One of the things we're trying to figure out with our rock collections in addition to crust analysis is trying to date some of these seamounts, as we mentioned. Oh, there we go. Some oh. new corals already. Look at that. Wow. Some unbranched species. Two different kinds. We did see um, one of these Eritogorgia a bit deeper as well. Was that on this watch? 
Yeah, we did. Trying it's to, like a pretty small one. Yeah. Trying to remember uh, what we saw during the dinner relief and what we saw in this watch. And then that other little pink one on the left, is that metallic? Yeah, the Chrysogorgia there. Yeah. Uh, no need to zoom on these. I'm just going to circle them for yeah, home. Thank you. Um, okay, oh, I have a view right yeah, down it. Yeah. Yes. I think you're wow. ready, Gabby. I think I got it. Uh, you got it. Wow. Finally. Way to go. <laughs> They're so cool. Long time coming. <laughs> There's also just like a very straight one. Sometimes they're just like very bendy. Something else inside of there. They can associate. Yeah. Very middle. Yeah, totally. Could be an anemone, actually. At this distance. Could also be a squat lobster. I think the color says squat lobster, doesn't it? Yeah. It's kind of in the One middle. One of those bathopathies type squat lobsters. Like that color, anyways. Oh, that would be interesting, yeah, if it was. Okay, go wide. Got a scram here. Yeah, so just on that one boulder, we started to see more species, like Ritogorgia, a couple of unbranched uh, primnoid corals, yeah. probably in the genus Candidella, a couple of Chrysogorgia, call them modified bottle brushes. I would like more rocks like that. We're very close to the target depth. Yeah. It seems like on other ridges, a rock like that would have had much bigger corals, even big mm -hmm. sponges. 